So we're going to have a post of 125 and a quarter. That's in a perfect world. Perfectly flat. Point outside wall, outside wall, perfectly straight. Now we're going to come up with a wall that's 96, 96, and it's perfectly straight. So we know this point, this point, and this point are level. We could do that. I don't think you're going to find a single house that's that way. What you really need to do is you really need to figure off of a string that's going from wall to wall. So if you have a crown, it doesn't matter. If you have a belly, it doesn't matter. You, you know your height is 36 and 3 quarters from this line up. Now all you've got to do is measure down to the floor from that line. And let's say it ends up to be a, a quarter swale right here. So we're going to be 96 and a quarter, right? We'll be added to that 36 and we'll end up at 125 and a half. This is a, this is a common problem. A lot of people... We're kind of starting to get into little stacking problems, and, uh, and this is a good point. Let's talk about the same thing that will happen right there. If uh, How many times do I get people come in and say, well, it doesn't fit. Okay, why doesn't it fit? First reason is I'll, I'll usually look at this. Next reason is I'll probably check those dimensions. More than likely, it'll be one of the two. If you can imagine, if this post, if it was set correctly from the string, what were we, 36 and 3 quarters, 36 and 3 quarters, it would be exactly where my rafter is going to hit. But if it's set, if you measured and set your post off of that quarter inch sway, oh, we're going to be down a quarter. Well, what's going to happen? We're going to stack that guy up there, and it's going to be an open merge mouth right here. Right? Because it's down, it's going to push that out. It should have been here. I was going to butt to it, and it's down a little lower. It would kick that out. Same thing if this is up high. Okay, so if this is up high, I'm going to draw over myself. Apologize, guys. Another wall out here. This is higher than it should be. You're going to have that bird's mouth. I'm going to put it by a bad drawing. Uh, that bird's mouth is going to be open up top because the ridge is higher than it should have been. It's higher than it should have been, so this is going to be open. It's the only way. It's just math. And uh, likewise, if you had some rafters that were should have butted to this, and that you, your height should have been here, and this would have dropped this down, these guys, now, they're going to fall to here because it's high. Whereas if this beam was at the right height, they would flush out. So those are a couple couple errors uh, in the cross-section of the building. The reason the ridge needs to be very straight, guys, is if your walls are straight, as they should be, and we'll talk about that in a second, and you put a crown ridge up there, and you didn't think about it, these, these rafters are going to come across there. I don't know how many times, oh, the rafters are short. You know, no, it's because that ridge these guys are cut mathematically. They'll fit right on that line, as long as you're outside wall. And here's the other problem: is how many how many times you guys line the wall? You're looking for in and out. Okay, if that wall is playing out, or if that wall is coming in. How many of you guys look for the swale in the wall? Okay. Not only does it need to be lined in and out correctly. It needs to have that plate line be straight across here. If it has a swale to it, well, that's fine. What's going to happen? They're going to be stacking here, and so here's your straight ridge. They're going to stack the same way as that swale in that wall is. So keep an eye on that, and that's why I think I say in the book, you know, that when you're, sorry about this, guys, if you've got a swale, you, you need to straighten that up shim between the top plates so that this line is straight. If you've got a bow, a crown, I should say, you need to trim that guy off. So you have a straight line, not only in and out, but up and down. And by the way, that was another thing I was going to mention, and I should have. Uh, if, you've got a, if you don't have a straight board for a ridge, cut one. Just you know, take a, 
take this crown, the your best one, snap the line, and cut, get yourself a straight edge, just like your walls, and then uh, that they'll fit just nice. Okay. Before we talk about stacking and before we actually go outside and do it, I want to talk about some plumbing line basics. Some of the errors I see quite often in the job, not only the ones I mentioned a few minutes ago, what, about using the strain to calculate your heights if you're setting ridge beams and perla beams, all, all those kind of things. The building, guys do not know how more important it is that the dimensions be exactly what you use to calculate. So if the plans say 120 inches and you calculate the roof on 120 inches, your math will give you exactly, I think I stressed this before, the dimension you need. But if this is 100 quarter, 100 a quarter inches, don't figure it. In actual in, the, in field measurements, if it's 120 and a quarter, don't use 120 as your calculation. Obviously, uh, what's important, you can use any number, you can calculate any roof. Is it? This is 120 and a quarter as well. So don't say, oh, this is 120 and a quarter here, and this is 120. Well, you better straighten that out. You better make that whether that be cutting this and bringing it in a little bit and cut and enlarging, shimming that out a little bit, you know, a, a little shim between the, the top place to move it out. Uh, that's your choice, but what you want is these dimensions have to be what you figure for your raptor lengths, or, you, or you'll have problems, and, and you'll say, well, why didn't this fit? This is right here. So, need to be parallel lines, they need to be exactly the measurements you use. Very important uh, that you should have diagonal this thing. More important than not is in a hip roof. These diagonals need to be exact. I know we're getting a little bit of ahead of ourselves, but I figure we might as well deal with some of all the problems that can exist. We've talked about uh, swales in the walls. We've talked about rises in the wall. We've talked about in and out. So parallel lines, dead on, straight and you won't, shouldn't have any problems. But setting your heights, coming up from a string, measured across from plate to plate. You care less if this is level from here to here. It's another problem people do. Oh, I'm leveling. No, don't level. Put your string across, right here if you're setting a ridge. Okay, if you're setting a ridge beam, this could be out a quarter of an inch. And you're using your laser to set this. Don't do it. Run your string here, run your string, go up it, and so what? The whole building is at a slight tilt, no problem. But the, the ridge will be at an exact tilt too. Everything will be, it, it, it doesn't share, it just has to be all in the same plane. So if you're out of a quarter inch, this should be off a quarter inch and this is up. Do not use a level. Use a string. You set that height, and that will give you your, your, your ridge. Okay, speaking about diagonals, how many times have you guys had problems? The same thing like I was mentioning about a rack earlier. Uh, you don't want one rack going like this and one rack going like that. Well, these are the same exact thing. You don't, these walls need to plane in with each other. So I'm talking about this wall, the other wall on the other side needs to be exactly the same. I don't want the other wall to be coming up. You can get perfect diagonals and one wall can be up and the other wall can be down. You're going to have problems. So you be, should, it's kind of hard to eyeball this, the other plane and the other. You might be able to eyeball the end wall, the this wall. It's kind of hard sometimes to eyeball these things. So do the old trick that the, the door hangers use. On a string, diagonal across, diagonal across, it should kiss in the middle if each of these corners is in plane with each other. And I've done that on many, many big jobs that were very technical, uh, I mean, it had to be big steel posts, big huge glue lines coming in. I'll do that. The trouble being is here, is you want to do that before you've done your ceiling joists. You want to do that before you've got anything out there because it's kind of hard. Uh, if you've got walls that are framed to the same height, you're going to have to come up a little bit, put a block up, block up on each and line your strings on top of that. You know, five and, five and a half inch block, five and a half, five and a half, five and a half, so that you're above your walls so the strings are not going to be bothered by anything in the inside. If it's been joist, and you show up, which has happened to me, I'll put a stick on the corner, 
stick on the corner here, stick on the corner here so I get above the ceiling joist and I uh, can run my strings to see if they're kissing right in the middle.